Hi, good evening. My name is Jay Choi, and I'm thanks for inviting me to this event today. And uh, we just got about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna give a brief introduction about our open source project called Visit, which is for operating smart contracts. Uh, to briefly introduce about myself, I'm a software engineer at Hatch Labs, a blockchain uh, tech company. And at the same time, I'm a vice president, president of Decipher, uh, which is a blockchain research group at Seoul National University. Uh, to add some explanation about our uh, Hatch Labs, Hatch Labs is a blockchain block, uh, technology, uh, tech company, and our serv key service is Smart Country Audit and our key solutions are Visit, which is our main topic, and our other solution is Correlator, which is a middleware solution that supports communication and visualization of blockchain data. Okay, let's start, uh, let's take a look at our table contents. Um, first, I'm gonna introduce uh, our project Visit, and then um, I'm gonna explain about two main features, which, is, which are deploy deployment of smart contract and execution. At the end, I'm going to share our current status and the roadmap of the visit. Okay, let's start with the introduction. Uh, uh, we can divide it into four steps of develop developing smart contracts, which are development of smart contract, testing, and deployment, and execution. Today, we are focusing on two phases, which are deployment and execution of smart contracts. If you are here, you have experience about development of smart concepts directly or indirectly. In my case, there is one sentence that every developer is in, have in common. There are so many things to do. There are many things to deploy and execute functions in smart contracts. They have to learn about some libraries, they have to make scripts, and they have to set up some variable things. So, uh, it, is sim it is not so hard with simple applications such as token, crowd sale, and lottery uh, because they are just made up of one or two constraints with simple logic. But times go on, there is increasing complexity of DF development. Uh, there are many teams that build a um, large size of, large, large size of a blockchain game and they are trying to implement their existing business on smart contracts. So this kind of DFs are consist of many contracts and they are combined together. So for developers, it is complicated to operate them. So we are trying to build Visip to simplify the operation process. So now uh, let's talk about two main features. First one is development of, uh, deployment of smart contract in Visip. So previously, uh, developers had to make long and complicated deployment scripts. Uh, uh, so they, in the previous way, they have to learn various. Uh, they have to learn a many libraries to make scripts, and they have to consider about some orders to deploy the constraints. After that, they have to consider about handling the addresses of the deployed constraints. And, and if the constructs need some initialization, initialization logic, they have to add some initialization process at their scripts. And it means they need extra scripts. So these kinds of processes are too annoying, uh, too annoying for developers. So we adopt declarative approach to reduce operation costs. So uh, the important thing in deployment is what to deploy is not a how to deploy. So if developers just declare some information about the targets to con targets of contract, this would make developers uh, deploy all contracts uh, with a single command line without any scripts or codes. And the declaration file, example de declaration file is as described as right side. So and then with the others, the contracts of the deployment process and do proceed compilation and deployment automatically, and this is the result of the visit deploy service command. 
and it means that developers doesn't have to consider about any library that they don't have to make any scripts. Just they uh, they just make a declaration file they can deploy easily. And the next the next feature about smart contract execution. Previously, developers also had to create such a long script in order to call just one function. To honestly. It's too long and too uncomfortable uh, if you are trying to get some variables from the smart contract quickly. It is not a prepaid method. It takes a long time. So, is it enable to call functions with a single command line? If you start with the console uh, and Bishop show this, this Bishop display this kind of screen that has list of uh, deploy contract and their addresses of them, and you can easily call function uh, with just the contract name, the function name, and the arguments. And you can uh, execute easily, and the visit will return transaction reset that you that show that your execution has been success. So in this case, also show that developers. Uh, don't have to consider about any libraries, don't have to consider about any scripts. Uh, so the main goal of Visib is make developers just focused on their uh, main logics that, uh, that is smart contracts. So these were our uh, main concepts and features of Visib and I'll share current status and roadmap of the Visib. So it is uh, GitHub. Uh, we are working on GitHub as an open source, and you can uh, you can see two links. That is about Visit and Sample Repository that utilizing Visit respectively. So please press the star. Then there we have been published two articles on Medium, which are, which is about introduction of Visit and five minute tutorials of Visit. And it has in Korean version too. So please see two two articles. So it is our roadmap. Uh, we I got I bring about two candidate feature in the future. The first one is developing GUI tool. So it helps uh, it make deployment and execution much easier to the developers. And the second one is uh, developing CI/CD feature. And we are, it's not, it's not actually materialized yet, but we are planning to integrate and bind mystery trouble, so, so coverage or other things. And, uh, and the visit will up run the server that show the progress on the dashboard and you can monitor the, the progress. So, uh, so the main, so it was a brief introduction of visit and we are trying to make uh, developers just focus on their main logics, and thank you. It is an our end of the presentation. Thank you. Okay, I think this is very opportune time to get a, um, some very precious feedbacks and questions from audience, including the Vitalik. And first, we're gonna get some feedback or some ideas about from the beta lift, and we're gonna get some questions from the audience. So, I guess, I mean, just first, a couple of questions. So, like, what language is this like, framework written in? Uh, framework that the developers should write or the main core of the visit? The core of the visit. Uh, it is written in JavaScript. In JavaScript. Yeah. And, like, what happened? What like Ethereum nodes does it connect to? Like, does it just connect to whatever you're running with RPC, or? Uh, I'm sorry. Like, what Ethereum node does it talk to? Uh, it it needs um config extra config file actually. Okay, so it, can, it configures and it just like talks over RPC to any Ethereum node. Uh, I'm sorry. So it just talks to like any Ethereum node that you set up using like RPC. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And this. No, it definitely is. What are some of the biggest use cases that you're trying that you're trying to make easier with this? Oh, uh, use case. Yeah. Uh, we are working on some teams that uh, they're they're implementing their existing business, uh, but 
we can tell some exact company's name, but no, I, mean, I guess like what like what kind of user like do you think would? Uh, uh, we are focusing on some. Uh, they they are not familiar familiar with um, JavaScript um, right. or other libraries. Mm, just always uh, just contract developers, I, I think. Right. Yeah. So just like people that wants to be contract developers, but just wants to yeah, yeah. do it more easily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this definitely does seem like a, it could help a lot with uh, that sort of thing. I, mean, I was just reading the um, the medium article, and I saw you can also just like, initialize an entire folder for a smart contract, which is really cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, and, and do you have any plans to kind of expand beyond just a smart contract and like include? Like uh, some like basic JavaScript app or something like that. Basic JavaScript. Uh, just like a create a JavaScript like a, a JavaScript interface that they can start with as well. Uh, it also creates some a a JavaScript APIs libraries of right. you know, the smart contract constraint functions. So uh, you get the developers can, can choose two ways. Um, you can uh, execute as a command line, or you, developers can use JavaScript libraries it, it generated. Okay. No, and it's, this does uh, seem like it's something that could be very and could be very helpful to some, to, to some uh, developers. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, any plan to support Viper? Yeah, we plan. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and you know, this just generally. Uh, Seems useful and cool, so good job. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any questions from the audience? Uh, I have a question for Vitalik Buterin. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I'm a journalist of this street of blockchain media. And do you have any expectations on uh, general computations on Plasma? Like uh, layered plasma or plasma on plasma, like that. And I, my second question is that: uh, What do you think the pain point of the uh, using the current plasma? Mm -hmm. I'm actually less optimistic about layered plasma than I was like in the original plasma paper two years ago. I think the reason why we wanted to do like plasma and plasma constructions, like with Joseph originally, was that we were in this mindset that in a plasma chain you would have to like users would have to verify the entire chain and so if all of the activity was happening on plasma it would be too much to verify but with constructions like plasma cache and plasma cache flow it's um like that that by itself um takes the um, amount of verification load down from being like o of n to being logarithmic so i think that might already get you most of the benefits of uh, being plasma on plasma but in that's still something that we pro that we probably need to need to think more about i feel like right now kind of most of the plasma community is more like just trying to kind of get existing things working and working well um, rather than trying to kind of optimize even more that complexity because like just one layer of plasma working like well can already do so much at least like that's my feeling at this point um, yeah. question? Um, if you guys have a questions about um, Vitalik or some Ethereum 2.0 VTAP then you can ask a question after this meetup is over. Please, please focusing on a little bit about the presentation. Uh, I got a question for Vitaly. Yeah. Uh, no. I, 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 okay. I have a question for the Miss I This is the first time to heard about the environment. Yeah. So could you compare with the Truffle Ganashu or Status Inbuck? Uh, the Ganashu is um, test testing blockchain, so it is um, another kind of uh, development tool. So uh, I'm gonna compare with Truffle. Truffle is useful, true. I, um, I agree, and it is useful for test test framework, but uh, it has very big learning curve for uh, developers. They have to learn about all JavaScript functions and all framework of Truffles. So. So if you start, if you just start uh, um, developing smart contract, it would be very long time to make a service or a big contract. Uh, 
Um, in basic, you don't have to learn about any JavaScript uh, or any Java any libraries. Yeah, you can easily uh, execute or develop uh, deploy old constructs with a single command line, and it's very easy. I assure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, And you have a new question. Um, a bit of a new question. Um, okay. So uh, your tool set is mostly geared towards uh, smart contracts um, and towards the composition of it, not so much in the, lo uh, the logic of the code, but more so in getting developers off the ground to actually deploy smart contracts as, as perhaps as quickly as possible. Um, you said they can focus more on logic, but what are there any? Uh, is there any inclusion for helping the developer de develop logic uh, within the smart contract? And is there any way um, that, like, how <laughs> are there any tools that uh, can help the developer test the logic within the smart contract? Uh, in this or in general ecosystem? Um, in both. Uh, yeah, uh, actually. We have plan. Uh, we we got a, a lot of various plan to to Im uh, improve visit, and one way is in improves IDE, so that improves uh, that helps developers to make their smart contract easier. Like um, so, the declar declaration file, as I shown, has been more improved with IDE, so you can drag and drop some contracts then the declaration file will be generated and you can easily deploy, deploy them. So another, another plan is um, supports EVM, uh, EVM, uh, I'll lose my word, EVM package, is it? Yeah, EVM package that is library, general library for smart solidity. So it's like an NPM or other things. So uh, we have planned but not yet. And in uh, in general ecosystem, you can uh, you can find Open Jefflin library or even package. So like this, yeah, I think. Thank you. Okay, I think we need to get to the next part of uh, the presentation. Can I can I ask yeah. for a bit of, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we uh, Hatch Labs is developing some middleware well solution, so. I think there there is some conflict with um, usability and uh, UX and decentralization. So um, I, I wonder your opinion that do you think um, some API server that can call function of the smart contract and or some query some data of smart contract is undermined de so, decentralization? Like, well, first of all, like, one yeah. question is the, does um, uh, WISIP, uh, the uh, WISIP, the way it works right now, uh, rely on any calls to centralized servers? Uh, no. No. Okay. So, like, what kind? Of, what are the kind of things that you might want to call to a server for? Mm, mm, there, there are some uh, services existing uh, that help that uh, open some API server, and they have some users' private key and mm, and user call it API. Then, then APIs call function with the private key mapped. Map. So that kind of uh, one uh, services existed, and the other the other thing is some uh, centralized uh, server collects all data from the blockchain and just keeps the blockchain data, just read only data. So there. Like, isn't the second kind of like what's the difference for that second example? What's the difference between that and an Ethereum node? Uh, Ethereum node, so uh, it is hard to query all data from the Ethereum blockchain. So, so this would be like an Ethereum node with like a, a much more extended, like maybe SQL interface or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, I mean uh, that seems like something that's. Um, you know, Fine, and okay, and I totally understand why people would need it, but I mean, it would I mean, it would definitely be good to try to kind of standardize those things as well, so it would be easier to like switch from one provider to the other. I mean, the first example.